Alrighty. So as Grace said, this is webinar five, the last one. If you haven't seen the previous webinars, they will be available on Startup Grind's YouTube channel shortly after this webinar uh, is over. I'm not sure of the time. Grace can tell you that. So today we're going to talk about name changes. If you maybe you've been considering changing your startup name for a while, maybe you hadn't thought about it at all until you went to some of these other webinars and realized that your name did have some weak points that you might not have realized before. So today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of makeovers, the pros and cons of name changes. I'm going to show you some amazing makeovers and I'm going to show you how to roll out a name change. There's a lot of moving parts, but I will show you what to do. All right. So this is me, Alexandra, as Grace said, my naming firm is named Eat My Words. We work with clients like Twitter, Google, uh, gosh, Colgate, Coca-Cola, Disney, lots of big clients, but we also work with a lot of startups. And over the last 15 years, we have helped a lot of startups rebrand, and I'm going to show you some of those name changes today. So we will start off with talking about why would you even want to change your name? Why do companies change their name? Then we get to the really exciting fun part, the before and after makeovers. Then we'll talk about pros and cons. I will show you everything, for the rollout, and then we'll get to the ask me anything Q&A. I encourage you to ask me lots of questions. You can ask me about your own startup name and I will give you my honest uh, opinion on it. And, uh, and so ask away, don't be shy. We have had some terrific questions over the last couple of webinars. And for all of you out there that are just curious about anything, go for it. Okay, so why change your name? So we can see the, we can kind of see like, hey, let's turn over a new leaf. So this is the reason why a lot of companies change their name. And we're gonna look at some that you're familiar with. So, uh, but before we do that, why do change your name? Um, your current name is troublesome. And we went through a whole webinar on that, uh, webinar to scratch. And uh, if you have a troublesome name, maybe it's hard for people to spell or pronounce, or it has numbers in it that people stumble over, anything like that means your name is troublesome. You might want to change it. Um, a lot of times brands want to shed a negative word that's in their name. I'll show you some of those. If a company comes out under new ownership, we are about to do that for a company that has actually been uh, renamed before, and now we're going to rename it again because they're under new ownership. So that's, that's exciting. You don't really ever want to name your company more than once, but hey, why not? And the big reason companies change their name is trademark infringement. And you want to make sure when you're naming your company that you do your trademark research, work with a trademark attorney to make sure that you're not infringing on anybody else's name. And I've said this before, and I will say it again, just because you own the domain name doesn't mean you own the trademark. They're two separate things. So work with a, work with a trademark attorney. If you need names, uh, shoot me an email, alexandra at eatmywords.com, and I will send you some resources. And you can start off just by Googling, does anybody have your name uh, or a similar name that's in your same space? Uh, you, you really don't, don't, uh, don't kind of rush through this. You, you want to make sure that you're not going to have to hire, hire Eat My Words or start all over in your own process to do, do a rebrand just because you infringe on someone else's trademark. Okay, so let's talk about shedding a negative word. Here's one that you all probably know, Dunkin' Donuts. They shed the name Donuts, the word Donuts, to become just Dunkin'. Be why? Because Donuts has a negative connotation of making people, you know, they're, they're fattening, they have a lot of sugar, whereas Dunkin' doesn't say that. And it also takes them away from just being for breakfast. So just Dunkin' on its own could be any time of day. So you don't want your name to lock you in. So that's something to think about. How will you expand? Will you be more than, for instance, donuts? And you really always have to look in your crystal ball. Okay, 
Uh, here's another company that shed a negative word, Jamba Juice. When Jamba Juice first launched, I think a lot of people thought juice was really healthy. And certainly there are a lot of nutrients in juice, but there's also a lot of sugar in it, which consumers have now figured out. So they dropped juice and just became Jamba and also was, were able to be kind of all-inclusive of any time of day, whereas juice is thought of something that you might have in the morning more than later in the day. Okay, another reason to change your name is to shed an old image. A company that did that a couple years ago is Weight Watchers, and they became WW. Now, I am a lifetime member of Weight Watchers. I am a huge advocate for the brand. I did not like this name change, and either did their members. Everybody still calls it Weight Watchers. I think here they were trying to be trendy and get rid of the baggage that came with the name Weight Watchers, which is a really kind of dated brand. But they all they did was shorten it to something that's meaningless to anybody new. If you weren't familiar with Weight Watchers, WW doesn't mean anything to you. And of course, their domain name is www dot www.com and another thing to point out here weight watchers is three syllables and www www is six syllables so even though it's only two letters it's six syllables so think about all of these things when you're changing your name all righty here's another uh, example of a company that wanted to shed an old image tribune publishing it's a perfectly fine name but they wanted to be kind of trendy and hip and cool so they changed their name to tronk which somebody said that's the sound of a millennial falling down the stairs <laughs> sorry i think it was hilarious so it was it was a failure now here's what happens when you change your name you're going to be subjected to the Twitter sphere, right? Like all kinds of social media comments and they got pretty eviscerated for this one. So they changed their name back and that happens sometimes. So you really wanna be careful. Don't ask a million people, what do they think of your name? But just change your name for the right reasons and at least make sure it's comfortable. It's, it, people aren't gonna laugh at you. <laughs> okay, now let's get to the really fun part before and after makeovers. I want to inspire you and show you what's possible. A lot of times when people come to us, especially for trademark infringement, they're like, oh, we'll never get a name better than this name. And it's hard for them to let go of a name. Or if a company is under new owner ownership and everybody else there likes the current name, but it's going to change, it's a really emotional thing. So I want to show you that it is possible to go from something you love to something that's even better, or something that's not so great to something that's truly awesome. All right, so these are all projects that I've worked on for many different kinds of businesses, and they will inspire you and spark your creativity. And I, I write some of these down uh, for inspiration. All righty, the first one was for a dating app, and this, this uh, was called, it looks like round view is rendezvous. Um, nobody knew how to pronounce it. If you said to somebody, oh, my dating app's name is rendezvous, rendezvous on its own, the French word is hard to spell, but spelling it this way is even more difficult. So they came to us and said, we want, we want a new name. And what the app did is it let you look at your friends friends on facebook who were single and connect with them so this is years ago uh, facebook actually ended up buying it after we renamed it and we named it cherry pick because you were cherry picking your friends friends okay and you can see cherry pick is easy to spell easy to say it's visually evocative it, it has everything going for it so a name like Rendezvous, it doesn't have any visual imagery where Cherry Pick does. You can imagine picking the sweet stuff, right? Alrighty, this was a collaboration platform and it was called Capture to Cloud. Kind of a mouthful. 
the cloud is kind of ubiquitous, right? Everything's in the cloud. So this was a productivity platform for employees to use, and we named it LiveHive. So LiveHive says, it, you can, it says activity, right, and productivity. Um, it sounds like people are engaged, they're moving, and it's lyrical. And anytime you can have a lyrical name, it helps people remember it. And it's fun too, live hive. Okay, this next one was a live streaming safety app. Uh, they came to us because of trademark infringement. Their original name was Witness. Uh, this app had millions of users. They really didn't want to change their name. And it was all about if you were in a situation that was an emergency, you could immediately start live streaming from where you were. And they didn't think it was possible to come up with something better, but they loved the name that we gave them, which is Parachute. Because Parachute, it's really positive. Parachute, somebody's coming to the rescue, right? It's really evocative. Where Witness, Witness has, Witness is a little scary and fearful and it's all about crime where parachute has more of a pardon the pun uplifting message with it so that's an example of a name change that went from something really good to something even better okay next is a data analytics company this was under new ownership they had a, or they had a new ceo and the original name was usiris like Cirrus clouds and a lot of cloud, cloud companies try to do names that are evocative of clouds, but I call it the, this is the tongue twister, the cloud crowd. And if you saw uh, webinar two on Scratch, you, you saw a lot of names in the crowd cloud, crowd, cloud crowd. <laughs> that, that is really a tongue twister. Uh, by the way, uh, just side tip, uh, conference room names, if you're naming conference room names, one of my fun themes that you can do is tongue twisters. They're just fun for people to say. Okay, so you, Cirrus, you know, kind of the cloud thing, little you, capital C, uh, people, it was hard for people to spell. They didn't know how to pronounce it. Was it you, Cirrus, Uc uh, People didn't know. Uh, and the CEO was embarrassed to give out his business card. They had been operating under the radar for a couple of years, which was good. So it was kind of a quiet name change. So data analytics is one of the most very boring things you could ever imagine having a name. And it's also really difficult to clear trademarking. So what we did is we just started exploring analytics and what's that all about. And we just learned that analytics, it's all about looking for patterns, right? You're looking for patterns in the data. So we, looking for a metaphor, started looking at names of patterns. And we found a masculine pattern, Argyle, and the name became Argyle Data. And it was all about finding diamonds in the data because Argyle is a diamond pattern. So Argyle is completely different than any other analytics or cloud-based company name. Argyle is really visually evocative. You know, you can picture it in your head. It, it's just something that's so immediately memorable and it's a name that, you know, I've shown it so many times over the years. And it's a name that really resonates with people, whether or not they're in the target audience or not. People like that story. And it's nice if you have a story behind your name. But remember this, you're not always going to be there to explain your name to people. So your name needs to work. It needs to work on its own as far as it being suggested, suggestive of at least a positive brand experience. You don't want it to be some like ancient Latin word that people are unfamiliar with. It needs to be something people are familiar with. Okay, next, uh, this was a robotic dishwashing company. Uh, it was founded by one of the co-founders of Nido Robotics. I named Nido, the Nido Robotic Vacuum and the company Nido Robotics. And she was starting a company that would make robotic dishwashers. And it started out with, it was going to be for restaurants. So they named it Bistro Robotics. But right away, or pretty soon, they realized that that limited them to restaurants. They were small. And restaurants are notoriously uh, slow at adopting technology. And robotics is terrifying to restaurants. 
So what they realized is they should go after huge commercial accounts like uh, uh, restaurants in Vegas that wash, you know, casinos that wash 10,000 dishes a day, right? They need robotic dishwashers. So they needed a name that was a bigger umbrella for them. So learning about this, what came to, came to mind for me is, you know, how do they do that, right? Well, who cares? It's magic. And I just like to think of like, it's magic. So that's where this name came from. Dishcraft Robotics, which is a play on wishcraft. Witchcraft. So dishcraft, witchcraft. So, uh, and then dishcraft, it's just, you know, craft makes it sound, it still makes it sound like the craft of washing dishes, you know, because dishes are traditionally, you know, washed by a dishwasher in a kitchen. But it just, it kind of elevates it to a new level, but it's not scary. Okay. This was a physical, plat physical therapy platform that people could use with their Wii, which is really cool, right? So imagine having a physical therapy, but being able to gamify it. So the company was originally called Respond Design, and you can see the problem here. The name share respond and design share the D. So if you said to someone, our company is respond design, they're going to spell it with two D's, you know, two words, two D's. I'm not a fan of, I'm not, they, and if they had a capital D in there for design, that would look weird too. So be careful when you're merging words together, the mashup, it has to really work and feel natural and not forced. This is forced. So they wanted a new name and I thought a lateral move for them would be good where they could keep this idea of it being responsive, but have another word with it that would be deeper and more meaningful to uh, physical thera therapists as well as customers. And the name is respond well, because it's saying your clients and you, the, the customer will respond well to this physical therapy. And also it was a well of content that people could choose from to do different physical therapy exercises. So that name worked quite well for them. And next, this is a research lab and the name is the Institute for Ethnomedicine. Does anybody know what that even means? Maybe if you speak Latin, but most people don't know Latin especially, you know, maybe old, some older people do. My mom took Latin in school, but many people don't. So ethnomedicine is the study of native plants. And this, comp, this uh, research lab specialized in researching brain diseases like al Alzheimer's and ALS and Parkinson's. So I thought they needed a name that was more evocative of researching brain diseases. So we came up with a much more approachable, friendly name for them, and it's Brain Chemistry Labs. So you can see the difference, right? So brain chemistry, it's like chemistry is talking about a lab. Brain chemistry is a, is a term that people are familiar with. Labs gives it the credibility of it being a research lab. You know, a lab is very serious. In Institute for Ethnomedicine, it was just too it was too off-putting. In brain chemistry labs, it just has so much more going for it. Plus, it's visually evocative. It's got the brain in it. So when people hear it, they can picture the brain in their brain. So that really helps. And when you're doing a name, you wanna make sure it is based in something familiar. So later on, when people are trying to recall it from their brain's dusty filing cabinet, they have something to grasp onto. All righty, next, this is a professional organization for executive women in the Bay Area, in, in uh, Calif California's Bay Area. And the original name was the Forum for Women Entrepreneurs and Executives, also known as FWE&E, which was a really awkward, cumbersome acronym. So, uh, and it was originally the Forum for Women Executives, and then they added entrepreneurs. <laughs> 
entrepreneurs. Entrepreneur is such a big clunky word and I encourage you to not use it. Try to find some other way to say that. It's hard to spell and it's just a mouthful. So they came to us and needed a new name. So we ideated around, you know, what, how do executive women want to feel? What is this all about? And this, this organization was all about helping women get on boards, making their mark, you know, really giving them something that would empower them. So we named it Watermark. And it was all about women rising to a higher level, right? The Watermark and leaving their mark. And the name has legs. They have, a, a, they have an annual Women Who Make Their Mark conference. And it's a name that it was hard for people to adjust in the beginning, but it grew on people. And now it's been at least 10 years. They can't imagine being named anything else. All right, next. This is a vertical farming company that's feeding the world. Uh, the original name, and I showed this earlier, was uh, C. Jane Farm. And I showed this in Scratch webinar too as being a restrictive name. Now, if some of you who are under 30 and are familiar with the grade school primers, the Dick and Jane books, you know, C. Jane Run, C. Dick Fall, you know, is this whole thing. If you're familiar with those, you get the name, C. Jane Farm. Well, most people weren't familiar and globally, people really had no idea what it meant. So what they were discovering is anyone under the age of 30, it was meaningless and like weird, not just meaningless, but totally weird. So they knew that they needed a name that was more meaningful to people and it worked globally. So because they were feeding the world, the name we came up with is Plenty, so that's been their new name for a couple years. And after we renamed them, they received $200 million in funding, which is the largest ag tech raise to date, or it was at the time, I, I don't know if anything's been raised beyond that after, after Plenty got funded. But this is what happens when you have a really good name. Investors take notice. And it's happened to a lot of companies that we've renamed. So you want a name that you know gets noticed not just by customers, but you want investors to have have your name connect with them as well. All right, and then lastly, this is a learning management system, and the original name was Edio, and I think that was for ed education, and then IO. A lot of people try to invent words just by adding like you know an an IA. There's another one called Learnia, like this Edio. So it, it's a really, you know, I'm sorry, it's kind of a lazy way to name a company um, when there's so many more creative names available. So the name, so my acid test, especially when you're working with a company that has students, right, young people, would they want to put the sticker on a skateboard or their their laptop or wear it on a T-shirt? And in this case, we no to Edio and yes to head rush. So head rush, it's, it's a fun word. It has a lot of movement and energy. It's exciting. And that's a name that kids would definitely want to put on a sticker on a skateboard or wear on a t-shirt. It's a lot of fun. Okay. So now let's talk about the pros and cons of name changes. So there's seven long lasting upsides to changing your name, seven temporary downsides, and, it, and it, they're temporary. Uh, it's a very emotional process. We talked about a little of that before. And changing your name requires careful consideration. So let's talk about the upsides first. Upside number one, you can have a name you love that suits you better. And it's great when you have a name that you love. I know, because I love the name Eat My Words, and I know from so many of our clients that we've given love at first sight names to, it just feels better. It feels better when you say your name to somebody, whether you're saying it over the phone or you're writing it in an email, it feels good when you love your name. And remember, no other investment you make in your startup is going to last longer than your name. And no other investment will get used more than your name. It's going to be the first thing people see. 
in social media, uh, on your email address, on your logo, whether they're at you know, TechCrunch and they see your booth, wherever they're at, they're gonna see the name first. So your name is really important. It makes a valuable impression. Okay, second, you have more years ahead of you than behind you. We just named a bank that's more, renamed a bank that's more than 100 years old. So think about the longevity of your company and then how long you've had your current name and how long your name needs to last into the future. So while it may seem like, oh, but we've had this name for, you know, we've already had it for three years. Well, how many years are ahead of you? And if you have been married and changed your name, you know that most people, if you've had it for a while, don't even know you by your maiden name. So, or if you, if you change, maybe you change your first name. I, I had a nickname growing up and I changed it 15 years ago to my, my birth name, Alexandra. And no one knows me by my, by my, my the derivative of that, uh, Sandra. Oh, it makes me cringe when I say it, but Sandra is a derivative of Alexandra, shares the same last five letters. No one knows me as Sandra. Everybody knows me as Alexandra. So think about that. Think about all the way into the future and imagine the possibilities of having a name that you love. Okay. When you have a name you love, you will never have to make excuses for it. And we all know what that's like. Well, we spelled it like that because that's the only way we could get an available domain name. Or yeah, I know it can be pronounced two different ways or, you know, there's, there's always, yeah, well, what it means is it's ancient Sanskrit for blah, blah, blah. Like that's making an excuse. And anytime you make an excuse for your name, you're devaluing your brand and you don't want to do that. Okay, number four. Changing your name is a great reason to get in touch with customers. Reach out, say, hey, we changed our name, here's why. There's always a story and, and you know, it, it's not the story, you know, no one could spell our name. Although I will tell you, you might remember the social bookmarking site, Delicious, that had the dots in it. Well, while no one was paying attention, they quietly changed their name and dropped the dots. And they put up a blog post about it. And they said, we changed our name and took out the dots because nobody knew where the dots went. And it was really frustrating for people. So it's okay to say that, but you want a new message behind your new name. So that's a good reason to get back in touch. Here's another upside. You can rebrand with a fresh identity. You know, hire a great identity design company. I have a, a recommendation if you need one, email me. Uh, and that's exciting, you know, all new, a new, you know, website refresh, new logo, new colors, everything. That's fun. Uh, if you have a really good name, people could pay you to flaunt it on merchandise. Uh, yesterday in the brainstorming session, you saw the name Spoon Me, which is the name that we came up with for the frozen yogurt store, formerly named Zenyo. And Spoon Me was a name that people wanted to wear on a t-shirt. So when you get a name like that and people will pay you to advertise your brand for you, you're golden. I mean, imagine that. Somebody paying you, you're not paying to advertise your name. Someone's like, hey, can I give you 20 bucks for a t-shirt? And I'm gonna advertise your name for you. So think about that. That is the gold standard. And finally, with a name change, uh, it's a great reason to throw a party. Um, unfortunately, I think right now it's probably going to be a, a party on Zoom, but um, if you wait a while, hopefully it can be a party in person, or you can postpone your real life launch party until we're, we're all safe to be together. All right, now let's talk about the temporary downsides. Change is scary, right? It's the fear of the unknown. We don't know what's going to happen when we change our name. Right now, I'm having a little bit of that about changing the name of this big company. Like, I don't know what it's going to be called. Can we find something that's going to pass trademark, trademarking? We will. We always do. But it's scary to think, you know, are our customers going to, going to know how to find us? And by the way, they will. You're, you know, you're going to redirect your website. So whatever your website is now, you can redirect it to whatever your new .com or .net domain name is. You can send out an email blast, put it on social media, 
even if somebody's off the grid in Madagascar, they will be able to find you if they, if they look you up. That's what Google's for. All righty. Downside number two, you will need to manage many moving parts. And that's why you're going to need a whole team to do it. Uh, but I can show you, I'll show you that a little bit later when we talk about the rollout. Uh, look, this is, this is the truth. Initially, not everyone's going to like the name. You're going to have people in the company that don't like it. Uh, that's what happened when the Forum for Women Entrepreneurs and Executives changed their name. There were some board members that just weren't happy with it, but it eventually grew on them. So you just need to be, be prepared for that, but names have a way of growing on people. Okay. Uh, you may hurt the feelings of the dude or dudette who came up with your current name. I'm usually... <laughs> It's an engineer. Um, <laughs> look, I, it's, just, it's just something that they're going to have to live with. Uh, what I suggest is you buy them a cookie or a donut from Dunkin'. Uh, number five, some people have a hard time letting go. You know, people like people that, that uh, people have a really hard time letting go of my name, Sandra, and calling me Alexandra. They just wanted something familiar and people love that. But you have to get everybody on board, and they eventually will. Uh, your mom or dad may tell you that your old name was just fine. People will say that. Don't listen to them. Run your name through, you know, you know if your name is troublesome. I don't have to tell you. If your name's hard for people to spell or pronounce or they don't know what it means, I don't need to tell you that. You already know. So listen to your customers. They're the ones that are telling you your mom means well, um, but look, if my dad had his way, I would still have my, my first job that I had, you know, oh my gosh, like 25 or 30 years ago. So don't listen to your parents, listen to your customers. <laughs> uh, next, uh, this is temporary. You'll need to invest in new branding materials, but they can last a lifetime. So it's worth the investment. It's something that you can amortize over the life of your brand. All right, so those are the upsides and downsides. And I definitely think there's more upsides and the downsides are temporary. So now let's talk about the rollout. There's so many things you need to do when you change your name. I'm gonna go over the highlights. Okay, you, first of all, you wanna make sure everyone's on board with the name change. D don't just, you know, a couple people shouldn't decide. Make sure all of the key decision makers agree. You don't have to get everyone in the company to agree. If you have a big company, don't try to be that democratic or it won't happen. Just make sure that everyone's on board, including the board, if you have one. Um, you need to note everywhere your name will change and it will change in a lot of places. So start paying attention to where those places are. I will show you some today. Um, I have this new online masterclass and in it you get the ultimate name change rebrand spreadsheet with, you know, like 150 places your name needs to change. So I'll show you some highlights of those today. And you want to create internal and external teams. And can somebody turn off their microphone that has their microphone on? Thanks. And assign tasks and milestones to your team. All right. Oh, also, you need to launch everywhere simultaneously. I, I think that's really important. You should only be known by one name, your new name. Okay, where to change the name. So these are just some of the places, domain names, business cards, all of your sales collateral, social media, all of your internal documents, like employee manuals, um, you know, any templates you have, signage, your accounts payable department, bank accounts, anything financial. Uh, your trademark, uh, you need to refile with the U.S. Patent Trademark Office. So there's lots and lots of things to do. Start taking notice of all the places you have changed your, you use your name now, and think about how you will need to, how you will execute a name change across those. You want to assign an internal team for your name change. You need a project manager, an admin. If you, if you have all these people, great. If you don't, you know, you, you might need to wear multiple hats. Uh, creative and design should be involved, and of course, a party planner. And your outside team, a branding firm, a PR firm, an ad agency, and social media. 
And I understand that you might not be able to hire all of these people, but I think the most important one, you know, if you can get a good branding firm or, you know, branding designer to, to do a new identity and have social media, you can do your own PR on social media. Okay, so the key takeaways today, there are many benefits to, to name changes. You do wanna weigh the pros and cons carefully though and think about your own unique situation. You need to create a well-planned synergetic rollout. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> that's all, it's easy. Now, it takes some work, I'm not gonna lie, but you will be so glad that you do change your name when you do and you'll look back later and it's gonna be an ancient memory like that high school nickname that you can't get rid of or like uh, Marky Mark, right? For those of you who, re who remember Mark Wahlberg's original name, ancient memory. Alrighty, now I wanna tell you about the webinars that you may have missed and will be available soon. Uh, the first one is the power of awesome names and that's gonna be the foundation for this webinar series and it's going to tell you about smile which are the five qualities that make a name awesome. Then we'll do the flip side of that, scratch, which are the seven deadly deal breakers. These are all hazards that you need to watch out for in your name. And these are all, none of these you should have in your name. Everything from it being spelling challenge to restrictive to hard to pronounce. Next, domain names. I think a lot of you have had frustration finding domain names. It doesn't have to be that way. I like to say the reason I have so much hair is because I don't pull it out searching for domain names over the last 15 years. I have learned a lot of tricks and strategies and I will show you those. And I will tell you about namestudio.com, which is a really cool tool, tool for finding available domain names and brainstorming names. And speaking of brainstorming, the webinar four is on brainstorming. You're gonna learn some of my very best tools, tips, and techniques. You're gonna learn how to prepare to brainstorm, and you're gonna learn how to do it online and not worry about what anybody else thinks or says to you because you're gonna do it solo and I'm going to show you how. And I'll also show you how to review names so you end up with the very best name not the name that's met with the least resistance. So that's the whole series and I hope you take time to watch all of them and tell your other startup friends and founders about them. All right, so that's it and it's question time. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. okay. Do you? Um, oh, she scared me. Okay. Good. My time. Right on time. We're here. We're here. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So let's see. Name is from Sandy. Name changing takes considerable effort. Do companies you work with ask you for the return on the investment? How can a company yeah. company decide it is worth it? That's a really good question. In the first webinar when I go through smile and I show names that make emotional connections, which is the E in smile stands for emotional. Uh, I talk about how emotional names can increase, increase sales. Here's the thing, what you can't measure ROI on a name change because when you change a name, the logo changes, there's a brand refresh, there's social media and PR and ads, there's all that stuff. You can't quantify how much value the name adds. However, the time when you can do it is when you're changing names on a menu, for instance. So we were renaming uh, wedding services for the Hotel Vitale in San Francisco, and they had really boring names like, uh, you know, post-wedding brunch and, you know, after hours bar rental. And so we came up with really fun names like, uh, for the post-wedding brunch, it was Bloody Married. The post-reception bar rental was Last Call for Alcohol. So we changed a bunch of names in their binder that the potential bride and maybe groom would look at when they were choosing wedding services. And just by changing those names in a binder, their sales went up by 25%. Um, restaurants can do this, changing the name of a menu item. 
suddenly chicken soup becomes grandma's chicken soup and sales go up. So that's how you can quantify a name change. Another thing that I suggest and an example I show is for parody products, like I was trying to find a mosquito zapper when I was being attacked by a blood sucking mosquito at 2 a.m. I went on Amazon and they all looked the same. They were all kind of the same, priced about the same. But one was named the executioner and it was priced higher and I bought it because it sounded like a badass and I love the name. So that's things that you can expect for you know your investment to to pay off or with names like spoon me where they're getting a return on investment because they're making a constant revenue stream through merchandise sales yes but we don't we can't promise anything Awesome. So next question we have is when you, when you're trying to decide your startup name, is it best to test it out with your target market or with other founders or just general public? Um, I'm not a big fan of testing. And I believe I talk about that in the, at the end of the brainstorming webinar. So I think you want to make sure it doesn't have any negative connotations with your target audience. Uh, one thing you can do is go in the urban dictionary. If your audience is, is young, make sure it doesn't mean anything untoward. There's a brand translation services. If you're, if it's going to be in multiple languages that you want to make sure it doesn't have any negative meanings in those countries you'll be in. You can, you know, don't send out a survey monkey to people. You know, can you imagine if Richard Branson had sent out a survey monkey to his mates asking them what they thought of the name Virgin? Or, you know, think of the name The Body Shop, right? Huge international beauty brand. If they had done a focus group, someone inevitably would have said, ew, Body Shop, that reminds me of my greasy mechanics, dirty waiting room, right? So, or a name like Lush, another international beauty brand. Lush, no, that's like an alcoholic passed out on the street. Or Coach, right? The, you know, worldwide premium luxury brand, Coach. Coach, that's a sweaty guy with a whistle. Coach, that's the worst place to sit on an airplane. So don't do things like that. Anytime you ask someone for their opinion, what's going to happen is they're going to, they're going to shoot it down. They're, they're, they're going to think that you're asking them for, you know, what don't they like about it? So you just want to make sure it doesn't have any, I would say, and when I say negative connotations, because yeah, sweaty, sweaty guy with a whistle, that's negative, but you can overcome that, you know, any brand, like look at coach, right? They did. So in the body shop, there's, those are all examples of brands that, that didn't listen to focus groups. They listened to their gut and they knew that they could overcome it. All right. Perfect. So tell, don't ask. <laughs> yes. Announce, don't ask. Perfect. Exactly. Because here's what happens when you announce the name, it's like, Oh, somebody approved that. It must be good. That's what people think. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So how often do you recommend maybe like a rebrand or, you know, a redesign, a makeover, not necessarily a name change, but just really like a rebrand. Or yeah. Maybe. Like, like a brand refresh. I mean, we have refreshed our website probably five times during, during the last 15 years. And I think, you know, the time to do it for us is just growing, right? Like, Oh, we have a lot more work now. So we need to, we need to have a different portfolio, something that's more responsive or like, you know, yeah, we need a responsive, we need a responsive website or, you know, my book is launching. So anytime there's like a milestone, I think something that where you feel like there's something that really you have, or it's like news, right? Like for me, the only time I send a newsletter is if I have news, don't send a, never call your newsletter a newsletter, by the way, people see that word, they <laughs> delete it. But don't do something unless you really have a reason to, or, you know, if it's looking really dated, uh, but, you know, I don't think that it's necessary to do them very often. Yeah, I definitely agree with the newsletter aspect. I know my inbox 100% agrees with that. Is there any <laughs> companies that you've seen that maybe had a really good example of rebranding and just growing with the trends? Gosh. I know there's a lot. <laughs> well, well, what are some of your favorites? 
I think throughout the time, I think Apple, because when you first think about them, they had like the rainbow Apple, which is like cool during the time. But then as they grew, they became more of like a sleeker, like user friendly brand. So you kind of see that within their Apple talks and in their website, everything's very seamless, very like cool and savvy. Yes, that's a good one. And another one is Banana Republic. Now, not all of you are old enough to remember this, but if you Google Banana Republic original stores, you'll see that it was completely different. They had Jeeps, like actual Jeeps in the front of the store, like coming outside, like built into the storefront. And it was all this kind of safari gear and theme of clothes. And if you ever watched Seinfeld, it was like the J. Peterman catalog of clothes and everything. Like, you know, the Trader Joe's uh, Fearless Flyer, like everything had a story behind it. It was really cool. But over the years, Banana Republic, which today would probably be a pretty politically incorrect name, um, it's evolved into like this premium clothing brand. So that's, they rolled with the times. I think I have a, I have a, what's your, what's your opinion on, obviously this past year, there's been a lot of brands who have decided to change the name of things or like the Dixie Chicks changed their band name to the Chicks. Like what, what's your take on that and the need for people to, to take responsibility for something that may no longer be widely accepted as an appropriate name for something? That's a great question. So some brands, you know, like Aunt Jemima, definitely, like they should have changed their name a long time ago. And then other ones, other ones like Trader Joe's immediately bowed to pressure when, you know, a, a student demanded that they change their culturally inappropriate names like Trader Jose's and Trader Ming's. And that was so wrong. And customer, look, people, those names are meant in, they're, they're lighthearted. Trader Joe's is such a lovable brand. It has so much brand loyalty. And there was a consumer backlash. Like, no, we love those names. They're not racist. They're not culturally insensitive. They're just, they're fun. And they weren't meant to, there was no harm meant at all. Um, there was nothing disparaging about those names. So originally they were gonna change them and then they decided not to. And they never did go through with the name changes. I think some brands that they had outgrown, they might've discontinued, but I was really proud that they didn't bow to pressure. Um, there's some candies that just rebranded in Australia. One, um, I think one was originally called Redskins and I'm glad the Redskins rebranded. Um, and one of the names they rebranded to was Cheekies, which I think is a super fun name for a candy. And I forget what the other one is. It's on my LinkedIn profile and I encourage all of you to connect with me on LinkedIn, but it was really fun. Like candy is really fun to name. So uh, yeah, I, I don't think it needs to be serious all the time. And I think a lot of the, you know, people got really beat up over this, you know, the, the backlash and from consumers and, you know, all these companies, most of them not, have been asked to change these names like Aunt Jemima for years and they finally bowed to pressure. But that doesn't mean they had to come up with something really serious to replace it. It, it. But I think they felt like they had to. Definitely. So kind of going more into like your clients, um, how do you present your ideas to your clients? Do you just like name one or two options or how does that go? Um, with most of our clients, it, it really depends. But on a usual assignment, we will show 100 names to start. And then the 100 names with light rationale, our names don't require a lot of rationale and storytelling behind them because if, if, if somebody can't figure out your name when they see it, it's probably not a good name. So we uh, show 100 names to start, let our clients choose the names that they feel are right for the brand. And that's another way to evaluate names, make sure they're right for the brand. And oh, by the way, if you want to run your names and through the Eat My Words Smile and Scratch test, just go to eatmywords.com. On the homepage, you'll see, you know, test the strength of your brand name or how strong is your brand name. You can run your name through there. It will ask you a bunch of questions and then you can evaluate your name objectively. But uh, ask yourself also when you're evaluating names, not do I like it, ask is it right for the brand? That's a completely different question and it's very objective. 
And so then we let our clients choose the ends. We run them through trademarking. Then we do a second round and uh, end up getting the final name. So that, that's a, a typical project. If you change your name, do you recommend keeping your old domain? Uh, keep it in, keep it in with a, and do a redirect. Mm, okay, great. And also, what do you think of the brand word tabula, T-A-B-O-O-L-A? Someone wants to know. T-A-B-O-O-L-A? Tabula. I don't, I don't know if that's supposed to be in a different language, but tabula. Oh, it has like taboo in it. Tabula. It, 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 it feels a little forced to me. I don't know what the company does. Um, you know, it's creative. Tabula. Yeah, it's got the double O. I mean, people say there's magic in the double O because of Google and Yahoo having the double O. So maybe that was part of it. He wants you to get, Alex wants you to guess what you think the company does. I have no, I honestly, okay, I have no idea. Um, something that has to do with things that are taboo. How do we do, Alex? Like the board game. <laughs> Content discovery. Hey. Alexander, may I ask you, to reduce uh, resistances when you ask opinion, can you just start uh, asking like, hey, what do you find positive in this uh, name? You can ask, this is a great question to ask. What, does, what do you think this name, what do you think this company does? That's a really good question. What do you think this company does? You don't even have to ask like, what do you think is positive about it? What do you think this company does? You know, Argyle on its own, you wouldn't know, but Argyle data, you know, well, it's probably just something with data analytics, right? And, you know, if you can have a tagline support your name, like finding diamonds on the data, but if you have a name, if you have a name that evokes something or what does this name suggest to you is good? Yeah, does this name make an emotional connection with you? Does it, what visual imagery does it give you? Those are all good questions to ask. But don't ask, you know, what do you think of this name? Because it, it, it is pretty, pretty subjective. Or what don't you like about it? It's, it's like, or it's say your name to somebody. Tabula, how would you spell it? What, what about if you, your name is four or five words that describe what you do? Does it make sense? Have somebody ever... I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand. If, um, for example, um, we would like to call our product, just an idea, um, sugar and fat eliminator. Can we write the four words, sugar and fat eliminator, like a name uh, like that, sugar and fat eliminator? Sugar and fat eliminator? Yeah. Well, that's descriptive and you probably couldn't get it trademarked. And it doesn't sound like a name. It sounds like a modifier to a name. So let's say it was called, you know, Fat Zap. Oh, that's a good name, Fat Zap. And then underneath it said, for the modifier or the descriptor of it, it said Sugar and Fat Eliminator. That's a good name, Fat Zap. You can have that. I'm really quick. I'm pretty quick, speaking of Zap. Free of charge. Yeah. Alexandra, you've been in the name game for a while. You are the name game queen. What's your biggest advice to everybody um, thinking about changing their name or starting a business? Like what's something that you want them to take away from all of this? When you're starting out with a blank slate, don't give yourself any disadvantages. So make sure that your name is easy to spell, easy to pronounce, that it's, you know, has some visual, that it's visually evocative that it makes an emotional connection. Um, you want to get a .com and do not feel like you have to have an exact match domain name. You don't. Anyone can add a modifier word. It's perfectly acceptable. Nobody expects anyone to have an exact match domain name. We're about to rename a huge company that is very well funded and they they're happy to add a domain name. You know, I think a lot of people don't know that for the first 13 years they were in business, Tesla wasn't at tesla.com. They were at teslamotors.com. 
uh, there is, you know, Dropbox was get Dropbox, Basecamp was Basecamp HQ. So don't feel, if you have a good name that you really like, don't let the lack of an available domain name stop you. Just add a modifier word. And I encourage you to, to look, to watch the domain name lesson, uh, domain name webinar, because you'll see a lot of ideas of how people added modifiers and also really creative phrases and my favorite one is a turkey company smoke turkey company named greenberg smoke turkey and their domain name is gobble gobble so you can do things like that we named a popcorn store pop psychology and psychology is hard for people to spell so uh, their domain name was crazy for popcorn so don't feel locked in just get a domain name that people can spell and pronounce and definitely go to namestudio.com to get ideas. I spend hours there looking for ideas and I always, always find good domain names. And also I get a, a lot of ideas for brand names. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Alexandra. Um, just check out our YouTube channel at Startup Grind. You'll be able to rewatch all the webinars within this series. Make sure to check out Alexandra on her LinkedIn, Eat My Words, use the name game um, learnings to your advantage to just crush it out there. <laughs> Anything else, Alexandra? No, I just want to say thanks, everyone. And uh, I look forward to hearing if you do have a name change or come up with a new name, I would I look forward to hearing about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexandra. It's been fun. Bye. Bye.